Welcome to the Hoop Show. I'm your host, Chad Cook. With us today, as always, is Marcus Shockley from BasketballElite.com and also a new guest this week from BasketballElite.com, James Blackburn. We're excited about the episode and we're going to get started. Our first topic is about a couple incoming freshmen to the NCAA, to college basketball this year, who at this very moment aren't playing with their teams on road trips overseas. And Marcus, can you introdu introduce this topic for us? Uh, yeah, Chad, what we're talking about is uh, two MVPs from the McDonald's All-American game uh, just this year. Uh, Shabazz Muhammad, who's headed to UCLA, and Rodney Purvis, who's at NC State. Uh, as you said, neither one of them are playing with their teams as their teams travel abroad and are playing in the summer. Um, now, their situations are somewhat uh, different. In the case of Purvis, as his team plays in Spain, it's more of an issue of the school that he attended for most of his high school years, which is Upper Room uh, Christian Academy in Raleigh. And Upper Room uh, was founded in 2001. And one of the things that's going on in the, in the uh, high school basketball world, as many people are aware of, is that there are a lot of prep schools that have sprung up, particularly in North Carolina, that, uh, that are helping basketball players get ready for college. You know, a lot of athletes get ready for college. Uh, some people would say that's, that they're sort of uh, farms for athletes. Uh, but in this case, uh, to be clear, uh, Upper Room has not had a, a, uh, a graduating class that had an athlete that would need to be cleared by the NCAA. So this is a first time through for the NCAA. It's not actually unusual. So it's, it's very likely that Purvis will get to play, um, but there's still some eligibility issues there. Okay, and, and, and James, would you like to uh, get us up to speed on the Shabazz Muhammad issue? Yes, uh, Chad, right now the NCAA, like Marcus was saying, is looking into whether uh, Muhammad received some improper benefits. Um, he got a couple of different things. Uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Benjamin Lincoln, who's actually from North Carolina. He uh, reportedly paid for some of uh, Muhammad's unofficial visits to schools. Um, a player only gets so many official visits to schools, which means that the schools could pay for that player to visit. And then the player gets away with that by going on unofficial trips to schools. And uh, sometimes those trips are funded by other third-party people, runners, different people like that. Um, and that's what the NCAA is investigating. Also, uh, they're looking into um, another, another gentleman from New York, um, supposedly helped out Muhammad's summer AAU team um, with some different funds and different things like that. Okay, well, now moving from that issue to a couple, a, a couple players who are in high school, we'll start with one, Tyus Jones. I got to watch Tyus Jones at the Peach Jam in July. He is a dynamic player, very fun to watch. Marcus Give us your thoughts on Tyus Jones. Well, Tyus Jones is one of my favorite point guards to be watching right now in high school. He's in the class of 2014. And the reason I say he's one of my favorites is because he's exciting to watch. He's electric. Um, he does a lot of things well. The, my, first, um, my first thoughts of seeing him is he reminded me a lot of Austin Rivers and the way he moves, the way he plays. He's got that offensive uh, uh, tenacity. Uh, he can finish with contact extremely well. Uh, it's one of his go-to moves is just driving into the basket, taking you know taking the foul and finishing. But he, he also understands how to use the screen and roll, uh, probably better than any point guard in the country in high school right now. And he, he uses it to just decimate teams at times. And then he can shoot from inside, he can shoot from outside, he's got a flawless release, he's got great poise, and he's got uh, a great hesitation dribble, which is, is kind of undervalued with point guards, especially somebody like him that's a little undersized. Uh, he can kind of lull the the defense to sleep, and then he just he can scorch them, get to the get to the interior, and again finish with contact, which is something that a lot of point guards that are smaller have trouble doing. And uh, he doesn't look like he's got that physical build, but once you've watched him play several times, it's, it's obvious that he can take that take that hit even at the college level, even from the big men, and finish. So it, it just makes it a, a double impact inside the paint, getting a foul on your big man, and also giving up a three point play. Yes, and I mentioned seeing him at the Peach Jam, and he was. We, we've talked about Andrew Wiggins and and, uh, and and Aaron Gordon and Tyler Ennis and, and a lot of players from the Peach Jam, but no, nobody was more exciting and more impressive 
then Tyus Jones. And, and, and that's the footage that we've been showing from the Peach Jam. Now, another player that is, is, is very exciting, but much younger, or at least younger, is P.J. Dozier. We talked about P.J. Dozier with Kerry Rich in, in the last episode of The Hoop Show. And Dozier is in the class of 2015. And James, you've seen a lot of him. Why don't you bring our viewers up to date with P.J. Dozier? Yeah, Chad, P.J. Uh, is, a, is a great guard. He can play either position, uh, the point guard, or he can play off the ball. I was able to see P.J. play uh, this year in the Queen City Showcase when his Upward Stars team played against the CP3 All-Stars, uh, the 16 and unders. Um, but P.J. is one of those players that when you look at him, being a 2015 guy, he, he's so poised with the ball, he doesn't get rattled under pressure. Um, when I watched the, the game against CP3, he didn't turn the ball over one time despite playing practically the entire game. Uh, he has really good court vision. Several times he rebounded the ball, looked up court, um, one or two dribbles, and, and got a clean pass right on target for easy finishes for his teammates. player like him, he has a lot of upside, which is why Clemson and, and Kansas have offered him. Um, and he, he's going to be a good one to, to watch in years to come. Now let's take a closer look at P.J. Dozier. Often a coach's son plays intelligently and plays hard, but lacks the skill or the firepower of the more elite players. Well, P.J. Dozier is not your typical coach's son. To be clear, Dozier has a great feel for the game and the confidence that comes from a great grasp of the fundamentals. Without these characteristics, Dozier's slight build could be seen as a detriment against the older and stronger players that he regularly faces but Dozier uses his height and ball handling skills and soft shooting touch to shoot over smaller defenders and to score frequently. And that height difference is likely to get more pronounced. His frame implies that his 6'11 father and coach Perry Dozier, who's a former USC Gamecock, will eventually pass on not only a great basketball IQ, but also maybe several more inches. And if this young point guard who has a great touch, great ball handling skills, and a knack for scoring, grows taller and becomes stronger, opponents everywhere will need to take notice. Marcus, uh, Tyus Jones is being recruited by everybody, right? Yeah, Tyus Jones has uh, interest, well, offers from re most recently North Carolina. I believe he already had an offer from Kentucky. Um, when I was at the Peach Jam, one of the games I was sitting at, I was sitting uh, right next to John Calipari, who is who's uh, very uh, vocal about his <laughs> him being his self being impressed with uh, Jones's play. So those guys, they see it, they recognize it, they're they're all actively recruiting him, yeah. and, and with good reason. I mean, he's a he's a really solid player. Well, and you know, you mentioned Calipari, and one thing you know with him is that he. he usually gets the best point guard in the country. So um, I know I haven't seen one better. Uh, I don't know if you'd like to make that kind of statement. You know, it's, it's really tough. You know, I always, it's always tough between classes. Right now, I think offensively, Jones is the best. Uh, you know, defensively on the ball, Stroman is really good. There's a few other guys who are, you know, who are probably, well, they are better defenders than he is right now. But offensively, I think he's, he's number one. One thing that is very common this time of year is – basketball clinics, basketball exposure events, things like that. And one in particular has caught the eye of Marcus Shockley, James Blackburn, and, and the folks at BasketballElite.com. So we're going to take a look now at that particular event. Hi everyone, this is Marcus Shockley with Basketball Elite, and I'm here today to tell you about an event I think you should know about if you're a high school basketball player. And what it is, is the 10th annual North Carolina Phenom 150 Fall Evaluation and Exposure Camp. It's going to be held on the weekend of October 6th and 7th in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Now, this is an open invitation camp. It's one of the largest evaluation and exposure camps in the country. Now, here's what you really need to know about this camp. Number one is there's going to be good competition there. There's going to be several Division I prospects at this camp. 
that's a lot of a lot of camps tell you that there's going to be good competition and you show up and there are a lot of guys running up and down the court that aren't going to play at the next level this camp will have guys who are going to play in college several of them are going to play at the division one level Finally, the guy who runs it is rick lewis rick uh, runs the phenom hoop report and rick does a great job helping players get exposure to colleges get he gets your name out to college coaches and college uh, college recruiting media scouts such as myself and we at basketball league we don't like to recommend camps this is one of the few in the country that we actively recommend we usually bring more than one scout we may bring as many two or as many as two or three uh, scouts to this event so it's something that we use every year before the high school season starts to chart, start picking out those players that we think we're going to follow through the high school year that we might not have known about. There's a lot of players that come to this event. It's a great event for us to start seeing some of those players and start trying to attract them through the high school season and then into AAU. And it's good for players to start building their uh, exposure level to different colleges. Now, on top of that, you need to understand that there are two days, October 6th and October 7th. October 6th is for the middle schoolers and October 7th is for the high schoolers. So I really hope to see you there. Thank you for joining us. Check episodes out at BasketballElite.com and AugustaBasketball.com and join us for our next episode.